Matthew 21, 7 through 10 says, They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their coats on him, and Jesus sat on the coats. Verse 8, Most of the crowd spread their coats on the road as before a king, while others were cutting branches from trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed him were shouting in praise and adoration, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hallelujah, blessed, blessed, praise, glorified is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They gave praise and honor to him while he came into the city of Jerusalem. All the city was trembling with excitement. All the world trembles with excitement at the name of Jesus. And they were saying this question, and this is the question this morning that I want you to hear this resonate, especially in you that have some doubt today. Who is this? Who is this guy? Now, every once in a while on my morning meds, I have some numbers that get changed. I had a number for a certain guy, okay, that's on the morning meds. And one morning this week, I, you know, I sent them out, and I got a return message. You know what it was? Who is this? They didn't know who was sending them the message. We'd never met. I never have talked to them. Never been to church before. Not this church anyway. So I, I wrote back. I said, this is Pastor Mark. Is this Tim? The guy's number was Tim. And they wrote back and said, no. But I really like what you wrote today. I said, well, thank you. So we texted back and forth. And this individual expressed many, many doubts to me about how many doubts they had. And I said, well, who do you say Jesus is? Look at me for a minute. That's the question you're going to have to answer the rest of your life, every day. Who is Jesus? Who is this guy? He's asking us this question. If you've never met Jesus, you might be asking yourself, who is this? <laughs> for us that have met him, we know who he is, right? Man, he's Savior and Lord. He's an awesome God. we got a video we're going to play for you. Not now, but we're going to play for you. Shane's... Ding. We're learning more and more about who he is, right? Together in the body of Christ. I'll tell you, Wednesday night service was awesome. I think that's one of the best services we've had for a long time. Of course, I say that about every one of them, as you well know. Hallelujah. And, you know, if you ever misplace your cell phone, man, this morning I couldn't find it. And finally, Deb, I said, Deb, would you please call my phone? Because I can't find it anywhere. She calls it. We finally found it. But the, boy, the boys were in the boat, right? We talked about this. God, Jesus' disciples were in the boat with him, and a storm came up. And he looked at him. He said, where's your faith? I think sometimes it's like, where's our phone? Wow. Hallelujah. Mark, that happened when you sat down. Did you sit on something over there, brother? Nope. <laughs> the spring that sprung is sprung, that's for sure. <clears throat> Some of us need to find our faith. We need to get, we need to call our faith up so we can find it. Amen. We've lost it somewhere. And God wants you to experience Jesus in your daily life today. This is not a religion. We're talking talk, about a bunch, a bunch of rules for you to try to follow, but a relationship for you to try to explore, to get to know. Like that person, if, if that individual had ever said, had ever come to church and I'd met this individual, then we'd known who each other was, Right? But because this individual didn't know who I was, that's why they asked, Who is this? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So I had to explain to him a little bit who I was. Jesus will explain to you who he is if you'll have an open mind. Ephesians 1, 16 through 19. I don't cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Man, I hope you're praying for each other. Every day I pray for you. I see your face in my mind like this is where you're sitting at today. So if you switch places, it screws me up. <laughs> but uh, well, but I, when I see you, I just pray for you, man. I want you to, to know what Paul's writing about right here. By the way, I want to recommend a movie to you. I saw the trailer this morning. about brought me to tears because Paul's in jail, and he's talking to Luke, and he's, and he's looking at Luke's face, and he says, we're sin about him. I don't know. That just gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. But there's a movie called 
Paul the Apostle of Christ. It's playing in Morton right now. It's not playing in, in North Pekin yet. But I would highly, highly recommend that you go see this. Jim Fadiesel, who played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, which they're going to do Passion of the Christ too, The Resurrection. That's coming in theaters sometime soon. In the process, he and Mel Gibson are making that movie. And then you pray for Mel. He needs help. Hallelujah. But don't we all? I need Jesus too. How about you? He says in verse 17, I pray constantly that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you deep, personal, intimate insight into who Jesus really is. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. If you want to take a scripture and open it up and read this every day, this is an everydayer, okay? You can read this like a gospel. You can take this pill every morning. Father, I thank you right now. You can read verse 17. You know, I thank you, Father, that, that you constantly want to give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation that gives me a deep, personal, intimate insight of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that, that you give it to me through the Son. Amen. water. Jesus came to give us a great salvation, but I want you to know this morning that he came to also reveal who God is to you. Did you hear me? He wants to show you who God really is. Well, I see God in the Old Testament. He's pretty judgmental. Okay, then stop reading that and start reading the New Testament, the New Covenant, because when a woman caught in the act of adultery who is supposed to be stoned to death with rocks is thrown at Jesus' feet, you know what he says? Where is your accusers after they left? He says this. Now listen, this is God today to some of you. Jesus says, I don't condemn you either. Ooh, get that, get that in your heart and mind. Jesus said, I don't. He's showing you the Father's true nature. He reaches down and loops the woman's hand and writes her up and gets her on her feet. Now he says, now go and sin no more like this. Hallelujah. Woohoo! Hallelujah. That makes me excited. Jesus came to reveal to you the true nature of Father God. Say this with me. Jesus came to reveal to me the true nature of God. John 14, 7 through 11. Are you ready for this? John 14, 7 through 11. If you'd really known me, Jesus said, you would have also known my Father. From now on, you know him and you have seen him. This is verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and then we'll be satisfied. I can, can, I can imagine Jesus kind of being a little bit hurt by that question. Can you? Because he just said, if you've seen me, you've seen the, the Father. Well, show him to us, Lord, and then we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him in a question, and I hear this in his voice. Have I been with you for so long, and you don't know me yet, Phil? I've been with you all these three years, Phil, and you don't know yet or recognize clearly who I am? Some of you have been Christians, some of you for 30, 40, 50 years. And sometimes I think the Holy Spirit wants to ask this question of us. You've been around for a long time, but have you missed who I really am? Anybody who's seen me, Phil, has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? I think his voice got a little high here because he was kind of exasperated. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, Phil? Haven't you walked with me these last three years and seen all the miracles that God has done through me? The healings? Hallelujah. Were you, weren't you there when I walked into the funeral home and said, Hey, where's Lazarus? Sorry, dude, he's already been buried. In fact, Lord, he's been in there three days. He stinketh. Don't you love it that God loves us even when we stinketh? Come on now. Hallelujah. 
you're in church, but it's okay for you to get a little excited. You can say, praise God here. We don't mind. And for you that have a problem with it, just don't pay any attention to it then. Hallelujah. Let us be a little bit crazy then. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus walks all the way in the lakeside, you know, where they're all buried. And all the bodies are starting to tremble in the cemetery. Because life just walked in. Eternal life just walked in. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the, I am the life. He walks right into where they're all buried. So I could just see it starting to tremble in that place, man. The dirt just popping up and down where all those bodies are buried. But Lord, he stinks. Lazarus! <laughs> I don't, it says it, the scripture says he cried out with a loud voice. I thank God he said Lazarus. Because if he had not said his name and he said, come forth, all the graves would have opened up and everybody would have walked out of there. Come on now. Hallelujah. <laughs> can these bones live? Yea, Lord, they can if you speak life to them. And we're bone of his bone. Church is. He's speaking life to us today. Oh, I hope you get a hold of it. Don't let it. You know, Brother Good, you say this all the time. If this is going over your head, stand up so it can hit you square between the eyeballs. Hallelujah. We don't want this to go over your head. I want you to get this today. God's got the greatest life for you. He's got the best life for you. Hallelujah. All you got to do is just have a little bit of faith yourself. Come on now. Praise God. Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am He, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, Phil? The words I say to you, I don't say on my own initiative or authority, but the Father abiding continually in me does His work and His attesting miracles and acts of power. Jesus didn't even take credit for Him Himself. He gave the credit to the Father for everything that had been taking place. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, when Lazarus got raised from the dead, you know what? He had to hop out of there. You know why, right? Because they wrapped him in linen. So he couldn't walk. He was coming out of there like this. Seriously. And somebody had to do this so he could see where he was at because he looked like a mummy. <laughs> so they unraveled. Lazarus is one of the only people on earth that ever died two times. Because he died again at some point, right? But this time, when he's down there in Sheol, he heard the voice of Jesus. He said, oh, sorry, man, I got to go. <laughs> I'm late, man. Jesus is calling Hallelujah. He's calling you. Oh, this is good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I had no idea how this could come out, but this has been good. I've been receiving from this, y'all. And we're just reading the Scripture. There's power in the Word of God. If you just take the time to read it. Believe me that I am in the Father, Phil, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the very works themselves which you have witnessed. Here's the deal, Lucille. God wants you to know him mano a mano. He won't relent to you as it all. He wants all of you. And he wants to give you all of him. Wow. His door is open. He wants you to know him in all of your life. In every test and trial, you can know him better if you'll just make it your mindset to do so. Even when you get great blessings, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even when you have great trials, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God just wants you to be so consistent. Amen. Romans 12, 1. I love this out of the Message Bible. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. So embrace Jesus today. You know, when I was a, on a college campus, Scott and I both went to Eastern Illinois University. When I was on there, we used to go street witnessing a lot. <clears throat> backstory, just a little backstory. I played basketball there for a couple of years. We used to have our pregame meals at a place downtown. I can't think of the name of it now, Scott. Maybe you can remember it. It was a restaurant bar. It was right across from the from Old Main. But we used to go in there and have our pregame meals. 
Marty's. We used to go and have our pregame meal there, and uh, I used to go there. You're not going to believe this. I'm going to tell on myself. You know, I wasn't always saved, y'all. Okay? And this was 1973. So, 74. We were just getting out of Vietnam, and I thought I was going to be a real radical, you know? I was studying to be a lawyer. I was going to be this radical leftist, man. God had other ideas. But uh, I used to get kicked out of Marty's all the time because I'd get a little bit tipsy in there. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about because I know you guys have been saved longer than I have. <laughs> but believe it or not, I used to I used to spit peanuts at people and throw popcorn at them out of the little things. So I got kicked out of there two or three times. And I uh, became Marty's friend, the guy who owned the bar grill. We sat, like I said, our basketball pregame. I went in there one time and started witnessing. Marty thought, what in the world happened to you, man? Last year, when you were here, you are spitting peanuts. This year, man, you're bringing your Bible here, talking to people about God. What's all that about? So I know, Marty, Jesus just got a hold of me, man, and he's just so real. I can't hardly stand it. And we used to go in there and witness to people all the time in the bar. Amen. It was bad for business. They got a little mad at me, but, you know. <laughs> But embracing him is what we try to confront people to do there. Is look, just, just say yes to him. Because he wants you and I to know him as the real God and embrace him as our real father. Now listen, I know when I say father, some of you, when you think of your father, it's not a good thought. This is a different father. He wants to be the father your father never was. Hallelujah. Paul prays this prayer, and we could pray. This is verse 18 of, Roman, of uh, Ephesians 1. I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, might be enlightened, enlightened and flooded with light by the Holy Spirit that you will know and cherish three things. You ready for this? One, hope, the divine guarantee and confident expectation to which he has called you. Do you have great hope for your life? Say yes. Thank you. Humor the preacher. Number two, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the people of God, that's you as saints, to know the glorious inheritance that God has given you in Jesus. Amen. You ever watch Strange Inheritance on TV? You ever watch that show? It's on uh, 359 on DirecTV. <laughs> it's the uh, Fox Business Channel. They had this guy who spent 40 years digging underground tunnels in the state of California where he lived. He was from Italy. And if you see, this sounds like, well, it can't be that. It's really cool. I mean, he had a sitting area. He planted trees in the soil five or six feet below the surface that grew these great, and he died. And he left this inheritance, and they didn't know what to do with it. So they made a, a park out of it. People come and visit this place. It's got healing spring waters that bubble up, and he's got all kinds of rooms in it. They've got a, a, a room about this size. It's this, it's this tall, as far as the ceiling, underground for people to have meetings or concerts or whatever. This guy built this. One other guy I saw had a, like a million dollars worth of Lionel trains. I mean, these trains were, he actually made little figures himself that were custom made of a little town, okay? And the, the train goes all the way around the top of the building. And he died, and he gave this inheritance to his children. When somebody dies, there is an inheritance. Jesus died and left us an inheritance. That inheritance he gave you is not to mully grub and be worried and anxious and fearful. He hasn't given you inheritance so that you go around sick and sick and tired and sick in your mind all the time. He did, didn't give us that kind of inheritance, did he? That inheritance comes from this, the flesh, the old man. But Jesus died to give us a new inheritance, a glorious inheritance. Yes. The yes. peace of God. How about an inheritance like that? Yes. So when stuff happens to you, people who know you cannot believe how calm you are going through it. They're going to get so upset with you, you're going to think, man, you must not really care because you don't act worried at all. No, I care about this, man. But I'm telling you, what, I've given it to God. You know that song? He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, I sing that about my life. He got my whole life 
In his hands, he's got my sickness and my nastiness. In his hands, amen. Hallelujah. He took my stinking thinking. In his hands, he's given me the mind of Christ now. That's your inheritance. My brothers and sisters, we need to quit living like caterpillars on the ground and start flying around like butterflies from flower to flower. Hallelujah. That's you. Praise God. I'll tell you what, Brother Mark, that's pretty good. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Number three, what's the immeasurable and unlimited surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power in us who believe? Now, come on, you're not a wimp for Jesus. You're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All of these are in accordance with the working of his mighty will in Christ. God wants you to know him and his character. Hallelujah. So who is Jesus to you this morning? Jesus asked his followers in Matthew 16, 13 through 16. A lot of scriptures this morning. I hope this isn't bogging you down. I hope you, I just enjoy the word. I don't know about you. There's some times when I come in on Tuesday mornings, I get here, have my cup of hot tea, and I got my, my New King James Bible on this side, and my NLT Bible on this side, and my computer with a Bible on it on that side, and I go, I said, man, God, you give me the greatest job in the world. Because I love his word. I love the word of God. I hope you do too. Yeshua came to a region of Caesarea Philippi. Who's Yeshua? Anybody know who Yeshua is? That's the Hebrew name for Jesus. Yeshua. Hebrew salvation. He comes to Caesarea Philippi. He asked the disciples, Hey guys, yo, who do people say that I am? They replied, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus says this. He says, but, hey, guys, who do y'all say that I am? What your answer is to this question every day of your life is what will determine the course of your life. The answer to that question every day of your life will determine the course of your life. If you've been hurt by somebody, who is Jesus to you in your hurt? Okay. Can you take it to him and leave it there? Can you take it to him and not be offended? I'll tell you what, we need to quit.